Thanks so much for watching our show. We really appreciate the support. It costs a lot to produce, so we're asking for donations and pledges here on Patreon. Thanks again. Welcome to See It and Feel It with Dr. Brett. And I'm Dr. Brett, and today I'm here or back with Jamal <laughs> Hayes. Uh, he just told me a really funny story about how when he first met his um, soon-to-be wife. And um, what's special is today he just had a baby two days ago, so he's on almost no sleep here in the last 48 hours. But I was talking to Jamal about how when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And I've learned these experiences so many times in life. And then he remembered this story about when you first met your wife. Tell us about that story. Um, I didn't know her very well, and I was outside at a food truck eating a falafel pita bread sandwich, and I gave her a hug, and when my arm went around, I got hummus in her hair. <laughs> <laughs> he got hummus in mess. her hair, and it didn't, didn't somehow it, didn't, it didn't, matter. didn't matter. Yeah, and I was talking about that because we have, sometimes we have so many experiences in life where we do you know, we get self-critical or we sweat it. We feel like we made these giant mistakes. But there are times in life, especially in relationships, when if it's just meant to happen, somehow you get past these sort of anomalies right. or abnormalities or whatever you want to call it in the beginning, right? Yeah, you can't say, you can never say like, never. You can never say <laughs> like, um, oh, if I never did this or if I was more like this, then she would like me or if I did this then the relationship would have worked out then you can't there's no what if it's yeah if it's meant to be it's meant to be and then we're always trying to learn right so we are learning and growing and we're changing and evolving and I'm coaching a lot of adolescents right and so I'm teaching them not to beat themselves up and Very still important. learn, so maybe next time you don't squirt her in the hair, in the hair <laughs> with hummus or something. But, but, like, there, but there is something yeah. to be said about yeah. when the chemistry is there, mm -hmm. right? When the relationship has value and people can sense it, you get through these sort of like either awkward moments or miscommunications. <laughs> a lot of yeah. times in the beginning, there's a miscommunication. Did you ever have a big one when you first met your wife? Um, I don't know when we... <laughs> First met, but we always, you know, stuff comes up and yeah. we, you know, things might, we might be passionate about certain topics or um, disagree some sometimes, um, but we always talk about it and yeah. we always come to come to terms. Yeah. Um, we know that we're on the same side. Yeah. Know? Well, that's a good feeling too. That's when you know you have partnership when you feel like you're in it together yeah. and that you're always on the same side and that you're willing to sort of let go, right? You know, and not hold on to resentments, bring it up, communicate, but not hold on. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so he just, you know, we just did a podcast. The audio didn't come out. And so we're back at it again. And it was magical. I mean, we were talking about the childbirth and the placenta. And like, you know, my face might have been a little awkward at times, but it was a pretty cool conversation. And I want to try our best to get back <laughs> into this. Tell us about this experience that you just went through, this profound sort of 48 hours here, but in particular, those six or eight hours that were unexpected. Yeah, we weren't expecting for today's what? Uh, today would be today the 19th. So today's 48 hours ago, roughly, <laughs> right? She was born at 11.55 Heat. p.m. He was yeah. born 11.55 yeah. p.m. Yeah. We just spent uh, two days with another couple and it was two <laughs> girls, a baby on the way and a girl. That's why that I know it's surrounded a boy. by babies. Yeah, <laughs> talk this weekend. <laughs> um, so Zeref was born like eleven fifty-five p.m. Mm -hmm. Sunday night. That's right. You didn't sleep a wink. Didn't sleep a wink. He, but we weren't. Yeah, we weren't expecting him until February. So we were just talking. I didn't even pick out a pediatrician. We didn't. Yeah. So this is a chill cat. I mean, him between him and his wife. I mean, they're pretty cool here. They don't even have. They did this thing what with a, a doula and a midwife. No pediatrician. There was three people there, the, du uh, the doula, the yeah. midwife, and her assistant, and then us. Wow, that's amazing. And a bathtub. <laughs> and a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. And then she was in the tub for another hour after the baby mm -hmm. came, and you were talking about like the 
placenta and cutting the yeah, umbilical yeah. cord. I mean, this is we this waited, was intense. Yeah, we waited an hour before cutting the cord, and even then, um, he didn't he didn't want to be separated from it. So we waited waited a little while um, till he was feeding. <laughs> till he was feeding. He was feeding. Yeah. So she you was out when of the shower, so when she, she got out of the tub, we waited. So so you cut before. the umbilical cord mm-hmm. while like he was like. Yeah. Like breastfeeding, that's pretty amazing, right? <laughs> so you're like, he's happy and that's it. There's no, well, there's no, you nerve. said there's no nerves, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So, no feeling. <laughs> yet he wanted it an hour later, right? He didn't want it. Yeah, something yeah. energetic. He just cried when we came close to him and we just, and you guys <laughs> like obeyed or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah, like, we listened. Yeah, um, that's pretty, pretty cool yeah. that you're like in tune that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, in this last podcast, we talked about like raising the kid potentially internationally because you have this really strong international background. Bahamas for medical mid, medical, school. medical school, middle <laughs> school, right? And then um, like Jamaica for elementary school, right? Uh, yeah, Jamaica uh, and then and South Florida for elementary. And then India in, in New Delhi for high school. Part of it being homeschooled. How much was homeschooled there? I did, I did about, I did a couple months of sixth grade so after i finished elementary school here in south florida i did the last couple years of elementary school and then i did the first half a year maybe a couple months of sixth grade and then um moved to the bahamas tried school didn't work out yeah (laughs) a lot lot of reasons i'm not gonna get into that um Uh, not really but i was like uh it was just very different i didn't fit in um and a lot of the schools I only was accepted into one or two schools because they wanted me to cut my hair. I haven't cut my ah, hair in since age eight, as far as I know. Twenty years, yeah. Yeah, he's twenty-eight years old. He has hair that he's been growing since age eight. It's very impressive. Home yeah. birth, like dreads since age eight. International background here. Yoga and pretty sophisticated yoga, meditation, mindfulness yeah. background. And a lot of practice. I've been practicing yeah. yoga for at least. Actually, over twenty years. Yeah, so, so I was about six or so. Um, yeah, um, and that yoga background though helped with this whole process, right? Definitely. So, as a yoga athlete, take us through. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, take us through how it helped. That's what I wanted to mention. It's um, it was nice feeling appreciated because I I felt like because about our connection we have a, such a great connection. I felt like I was running around doing trying to do a million things. The analogy I used in our last podcast was trying to catch a flight. You're mm-hmm. running late for your flight, but you still have a bunch of stuff to do. Um, <laughs> so you're not sweating it if you're right. You're not worried about missing your flight because you're so focused on getting everything done. Yeah, you're right? not going to miss the flight. No doubt, right. the baby's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just trying to get everything ready. Um, get the tub filled. That takes a while. Wow. To make sure it's hot enough. And right. just all the things. Now, how do you keep and, the tub hot? In the last podcast, I wanted to ask this question. <laughs> didn't get to it. She was in it for another hour. Did she just let it get lukewarm or you just... There's a heating just element. Keep, we yeah. had a... There's a heat, little heating element to maintain it at around body temperature. So around 98 degrees. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Very cool. <laughs> and so tell us about wow. the spiritual side of this experience. The Oh man, uh, you bring in br- bringing in new life is such a spiritual experience. I mean, it's it's life. It's yeah. It's the biggest transition other than death, I guess. Like yeah. it's and it's so precious because you're so it's so delicate. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's spooky. Like how delicate? I right. was asking about how you hold the head and then and you figure that out pretty quickly, right? You somehow. <laughs> Is it just, biologically natural or is uh, it... Like, know, maybe it might be instinctual. Yeah. But yeah, it just comes you and your of, arm is kind of... It just fits right. perfectly. Right. No, uh, does it matter whether you do your righty or no. lefty? <laughs> like, you're going to like this one. You're going to like this one. Are you a left-handed of, athlete or... One of the positions, and you can do it for... And you can hold the baby like this, but one of the positions for breastfeeding, they call it the football hold. So, ah, like football. So the mom can have one hand free at least while she's feeding. You hold, let me do it on this side. You hold the baby, you tuck it in, you hold the head, and the baby can feed, but it's the football hold. And oh, got it. To, yeah, it's like you're, <laughs> like, like yeah, you're running exactly. with the football. I never played, yeah. No, I always like played quarterback or, or, okay. or you know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't run up the middle or whatever. I didn't have I'm any a size. I'm a fast guy, but, so I, I catch it and. 
<laughs> Catch the baby and run. I think we've seen that in movies, right? Like where OJ Simpson commercials from like probably from when you were born, like He's 28 years baby. ago. I think there were like Hertz commercials or something where he was running through airports, but I don't know if there was a baby in those commercials or not. Yeah, so they call it that, the football yeah. hold. Like, yeah, that makes sense somehow. Yeah. I doubt it's you're going to be running secure. with a baby, though, right? It's no. It's just baby. <laughs> it's nice that you can have one hand free, though. Right. So you don't and, have to have... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would be like, you know, so we spent the weekend with, like, friends on the other coast, right, uh, of Florida, and they had a 16-month-year-old girl and then the baby on the way, and 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 the guy was so physically strong, and the mom was, like, strong and everything, and I had so many injuries. I was just like... How much would you, would it cost for me to hire you guys? <laughs> like, you know, just to carry there because he was. They were both carrying. The mom was carrying. She's seven months pregnant, oh, wow. carrying the sixteen month year old, no problem, right? And then they were switching off and everything. And the guy's a big, strong guy, so it's not that much of an issue for him at all. But she was seven months pregnant and had no issues carrying the baby, the sixteen month year old. It's a big baby, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, it's like. It was very impressive. Years. My wife and I were like, okay, you know, are we ready? And now we're, here we are again. Are you ready? Are you going to, you going to jump in on the COVID baby boom? Yeah. I don't, you know, look, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Get in on the trend. <laughs> well, you guys were, were you guys pre COVID? I guess. No, right we around. were in May. May. So May, we were in lockdown. You were, May is, so you guys are baby boom, COVID yeah, boom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See, there are there is some good that has come of this too. It's not yeah. all been, you know, no, suffering. It's, a right? it's been a tough so, year, but definitely a blessing yeah. and a lot of a lot to look forward to. For sure. What are your thoughts on 2021 here? Like, you know, in terms of this whole, you know, Man. scene and any thoughts on all this? Everything's so turbulent right now. Yeah. I feel like I don't know. I feel like anything can happen. I feel like things are starting to open up, but then when they do, then we go more into lockdown or then yeah. you get a spike in cases. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the misinformation is being filtered out now, though. It's been around long enough mm. so that people are like, even the CDC and the WHO are saying how, um, like, the, they, they're admitting that the PCR tests aren't, um, they're not valid tests. They're not meant for COVID. Um, wow. So the numbers are off. Wow. Um, so they're admitting things like that. We're getting to see what really is mm. COVID and what's not. Mm. Thanks for watching See It and Feel It with Dr. Brett. And stay tuned for part two of this interview. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with a friend.